Oh, there we go. Cool, it's working. Good to know. Actually, I think this lettering turned out pretty nice. I'd wear this on a t-shirt. Needs a graphic, though. Let me just uh, do this real quick. I just grabbed some reference. Just to kind of jazz this up a little bit here. Skulls are always a good thing to add to shirts. And then of course, it's always sick when it's holding an eight ball in its mouth. This is what kids from the 90s call a poison 8-ball. This is like my go-to thing that I draw now when I have to draw something. I'm like, uh, poison 8-ball. Because it looks cool and it's pretty easy. Needs a snake. Maybe it's like coming out of its eye. don't know what a poison eight ball is. Uh, it was popularized by Pogs, but I don't know if it came from Pogs. I don't know how to draw snakes very well, so there we go. It's sneaky enough. And just a happy little snake. Oh, this girl needs to be angry. The, the angry eyes need to be baked into the bone structure for some reason. There we go. That's better. I'm gonna save this actually. Okay, so uh, today is uh, a very special day because it's my fiance Bob's birthday. So everyone send him a happy birthday to uh, Bob Servo on Twitter. And unfortunately, I can't be there with him to celebrate it. Uh, we were supposed to get married April 26th, but obviously that couldn't happen. And this is supposed to be the first of his birthday uh, we would celebrate as a married couple. Unfortunately, we had uh, we are unable to even see each other right now. So I want to make the best of today for him. So I'm gonna start uh, my warm up by drawing something he requested. Now I'm gonna start drawing here, and let's see if anyone can guess who this character is. I'll give you one hint, it's not a video game character. Hopefully that's okay for this fangamer stream. <laughs> Draw Bob. I do like drawing Bob. I've drawn him several times, even before we started dating. He's got a good character design. I'm just pulling up some reference for this character. I don't want to be super on model with this because they're very specific and I think that would take a while here. But yeah, Bob is- there's Bob right now in the chat as Retronauts. That's his classic gaming po uh, podcast name. It's not a Simpsons character. I wouldn't need reference for that. Okay. Oh, and we've already hung out on uh, Animal Crossing and gave him a gift. I'm trying to think of like how on model I want to be with this character here. So I want to give him my own flair, but I also tend to adhere to character designs very carefully. 
because I like trying to match the style of whatever I'm drawing. It just naturally happens. Also, it's not a human character. Like, when I draw a human character, I tend to kind of give him my own flair, but when it's not, when it's like an anthropomorphic character, I'm like, I don't know. I don't have my own style when it comes to that. Thanks for all the birthday wishes for Bob. Manpile. I like your name. Yes, Carlo goes boom. It is Duckman. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? It's kind of hard to hide it. Unless I went like wildly interpretive. If I tried to draw Duckman from memory, oh, I should have done that. Then it would have been very different, I think. Realistic duck man. It would just be a duck with uh, glasses. There are actually some very cool official model sheets of duck man that you can find easily online. I can actually show them out to you right now. It's such a simple, or deceivingly simple design, but there's so many little things that the the animators had to watch out for. I really like these kinds of guides showing off what not to do. I'm sure I've already broken many of these rules already. This is good too. Especially things like this show off the very subtle difference in, in uh, the body shape. That's right, he'd better have three chest hairs. I really like the style though, it's very crude, but uh, in, a, in a cool kind of 90s way. And I've always liked his floaty um, glasses here. I almost said eyeglasses. I guess like call them that. Sounds too old-timey though. Oh, one thing I, I really liked about the model sheet is how it showed off the eyebrows, how to do the eyebrows. I think it's really cool how they're structured. Like you can see here, it says specifically it's not like it's not like that. You just you have to draw three lines first and then connect these and then fill it in. Knowing how to structure certain features is a really important part of keeping characters on model. A duck fan and the new ducktail is that'd be really cool in that style. I think he would fit in pretty well because he's, he's kind of angular and flat. I can't remember, do his eyebrows reach his glasses when he's angry? I'm not gonna look it up. I do want to follow that uh, eyebrow model though. pretty close to the real thing. Maybe when I'm rendering it a bit more and when I do the inks, I'll give it more of my own touch. Now 
I'm just flipping it to, to check the proportions of things. I don't think about the model sheet too much. It said not to flare the body too much. always show teeth, kind of like uh, Simpsons characters. Sometimes they have their teeth showing when ha their mouths are open, sometimes not. I think it largely depends on, I guess, how large they're- or how wide they're opening their mouths, and what the animator feels like doing. I'll, I'll give you the teeth, don't worry. What if they gave him, like, Simpsons teeth? Look. What if it's uh, season one Simpsons teeth where they have them in the bottom row too? I think this is actually more like a real duck. <laughs> it's more anatomically correct. That's okay, I'll take him out. I do like the Simpsons teeth though. There, there aren't too many like cartoons I can think of where the teeth is drawn in a very, very specific way. He's more of an uh, overbite, so I'm shortening his lower bill here. Yeah, it kind of didn't look sort of like Sonic movie. Uh, OG design. Because teeth freaking. Uh, let me see. Oh, it goes all the way back. I wonder if there's a mouth chart for Duckman somewhere. I'd like to see that. It's cool looking at these model sheets though, because I actually got these as a handout in animation school. We didn't have to draw him for anything, but this is just given out as an example of what a model sheet looks like. It is a very good example. I also love that Klaus Kichupo handwriting. I still don't like how his legs look. I think they need to be bowed a bit more. I think. I think this is too much, but whatever. I'm not trying to keep it super on model. Just on model enough. I wish Jason Alexander would crash my stream. I actually don't know what he's up to. In case anyone's never seen Duckman before, you can easily find episodes on YouTube. That series has been practically abandoned. It's a shame though, because it's good. I think he looks pretty good here. Yeah, you can get all of Duckman on a, a cheap DVD as well. It's not hard to find. Okay, I'm I'm gonna ink this. I think I'll keep using this pen. This is my favorite pen to sketch with in Clip Studio. It's called the Miller Pen. I showed this off in my first stream, but in case you didn't see, it just kind of blobs out at the ends here. 
and I like how it looks. And it's just unrefined enough that it's fun to sketch with, like you don't feel like you have to do everything super clean. But I like inky with it too, for that reason. It feels more organic in a way. Which is something that's, that can be hard to achieve when you're uh, inking digitally. Yeah, I actually need to watch more of, of the new Duck Tales. I've seen... I think just the first episode? The thing is, I've never been the biggest DuckTales fan. So that new show does look great. But I just, I don't get as excited over it as other people. But I want to see it for the other Disney Afternoon characters making cameos in it. That's what gets me excited. I'm sure things are very off model right here, but... I want to see it for a duck, uh, Darkwing Duck stuff, especially. If you haven't seen it already, like, you should go to, on my Twitter and see that uh, this awesome commission Bob got for me from Tad Stones, the guy who created many Disney Adventures stuff. He commissioned a really cool piece of Splatter Phoenix from Darkwing Duck. A very underrated villain. She's only been in two episodes, but when I was a kid, I thought she was the coolest. I recently rewatched those episodes, and she's still cool. That first episode, especially, is like amazingly animated. So definitely check that out on, on Disney Plus if you haven't already. Yeah, he did a great job drawing her too. He said, I think he said it's his, his first time drawing her as a request. I need to look up reference. Oh, Alex just linked it in the chat. It's very cool. Oh, one of the things I love about this style is like the random little ticks, like that. I always like styles that are just a little bit grungy and unrefined. I think that would make it weird to see Duckman in the new DuckTales cartoon, because that style is like super clean and sharp. There was something about his feet in the model sheets, too. Okay, yeah, his... His toes can't be too pointy. Yeah, lots of little, like, ticks and... I guess grunge marks, I don't know how else to describe them. Everywhere is, is a very 90s thing, I feel. Especially in comic books. Duckman was created by uh, Everett Peck, I believe his name was. Bob will tell me if I'm right or wrong. His stuff is super cool, like his paintings. I can't quite get the uh, Duckman handwriting style down. Okay. Oh, I 
the chest here. Uh, his body's definitely looking too dumpy here. That's kind of bothering me. So just a quick fix here. Now his tail feathers are really long, but that's okay. His body's a, a lot less dumpy than I remember it being. Alright. Shadows always help ground a character a bit. I'm gonna color this. Actually, let me move this whole thing a bit first. By the way, now that I'm using a like a mic on a crane arm, it kind of blocks my view when I'm drawing. Not the drawing itself, just like the toolbar, so I might be a bit slower than usual when I'm trying to do things. Yeah, the cigarettes keep him thin. Duckman was never really a, a food monster, was he? Like a lot of cartoon protagonists of that era. Hmm, what should I color him with? Maybe a watercolor might be cool. Digital watercolors are nice because you can erase your mistakes. I forgot to shade his neck here. I recently did a a watercolor looking shirt design for Fangamer. It's not out yet. It's not gonna be released for a while, I don't think. But that made me bust out these digital watercolors for the first time in a while. I'm thinking now I wanna do more shirt designs using this because the effect is really cool. And it's easy because you don't have to conform to the lines as much. I always like a chance to be faster and more efficient at my job while still keeping the quality. Creator likes to render him in acrylics. Acrylics or gouache? It looks kind of like that. Oh, does he have an orange beak? Yeah, he does. Brown. This might look um, not as yellow to the people watching here, maybe, because uh, my Cintiq, which is what I draw on, the color calibration is a bit off, so everything looks a lot warmer. So what I often have to do is, if I'm working on my coloring, Oh, I don't know, once in a while I'll have to like move it over to my other, other monitor. So things that look like very warm and yellowy on my Cinti here, once I move to another monitor it's like not as much.
all questions about my tools and what I use are answered in the stream layout. I did that because I can't, I don't always remember my own specs. Coloring Duckman is easy because it's made up of like three colors. I don't remember what exactly, uh, which Cintiq I use, but and I can't see the stream layout right now. I don't think it's that, though. And he's just like mostly made of oranges and yellows. Two on UX? Yeah, that sounds about right. I really like how the watercolor looks with this millet pen that I use. Cause it looks like a almost like a ballpoint pen drawing with some watercolor washes on it. And his whites are not exactly white, they're like a slate blue tinge to it. I always like it when they do this in cartoons. I watched- I rewatched all of Mission Hill lately because Bob was doing- is doing a miniseries about it and his um, what a cartoon podcast. And Mission Hill is a cartoon I always look to whenever I, I want like stylized coloring, like weird colors. Because like, I've always loved how the, the whites of their, their eyes and teeth are yellow. And it still looks fine because everything else is weirdly colored and I really like how it's stylized like that. Okay, um... I'm gonna color in the speech bubble too. Whenever I use natural mediums, which is not what I'm doing right now, it's just fake natural mediums, I like shading things with a bit of purple. So I want to see how that looks. Let's put it underneath the current watercolor layer, maybe. And make it a, a multiply layer. That looks kind of okay. It just kind of gives the color a bit of extra dimension. Just by adding a tiny bit of purple. I don't use watercolor much. When I used to do more natural medium stuff, I, lo I loved using Copic markers. And that I would use purple shading on everything. It's good for just like doing a light wash in the background too, like this. And then, oh by the way, I'm using a tool called uh, Rough Wash. I think it came with Clip Studio. I can't remember actually. And I'm gonna switch to textured blender. Which you can see here, it just kind of like it's like adding water to the watercolor to blend things better. I just like adding some like deliberate bleed. Just 
to make it seem like it's kind of spreading out on the like, wet paper. I like adding this, uh, doing this a lot, just adding like little mistakes, quote unquote mistakes in my coloring. It's controlled chaos. I would normally add some splatter as well, but I, I can't do that in Clip Studio. I don't have a brush for it. It's in Photoshop. I'm just gonna stick to Clip Studio today. Birthday, Bob. Oh, hey, Henry. <laughs> I'm gonna save this now. You could even print it out if you like. I can send you the high res. Actually, um, I want to try something else, kind of Duckman related. Let me just open up a new canvas. So, my, my, my past two streams, I warmed up by drawing an Amabie which is a, a Japanese mythical creature that is said to ward off plagues if you show pictures of it to people. And, I, and since I started off with uh, Duckman this time, I couldn't do that. But now I'm thinking, I could do an Amabie in the Duckman style. Because Amabie is kind of like, it's kind of like a bird. A water bird, because it comes out of the ocean. So I want to see if I can draw in, in the Duckman style now. Let's see here. I need some... Some reference. drawing of the MFDA just, just to have on hand. I'm not gonna spend too long on this because I'm not gonna stream for as long today. Maybe about three hours. And there are some requests I want to fulfill. Okay, so that's what a BA looks like. You might have seen pictures of it online. A lot of people are drawing pictures of it right now. And I'm looking up some reference of what some uh, female ducks look like on Duckman. They're usually babes.
Okay. Yeah, they have very human eyes. I kind of like it when anthropomorphic characters have creepy human eyes, though. Characters usually, usually have really small ears. Not sure what to do about this body though. I mean, I'm tempted to make her kind of like a babe, like a Duckman babe, but that might be a bit too lewd for the stream. Unsettling. <laughs> it looks like Android 18. Yeah, I think when I first drew the Amabie on the stream, I called it like Trunks hair. She has going on here. Maybe Toriyama got inspiration from it. how feathers or scales are rendered in this style, but I'm just gonna guess it's kind of like this. <laughs> this is weird. kind of tell what I'm going for. It's gonna add more ticks, but I think, I think Duckman himself has more of those than most characters. at some of the, the characters in the show now, it's really weird because there are some like duck women characters that still have human ears. I never noticed that before. But yeah, this is very ducky sounding, this music. I'm gonna do some real quick colors. Actually, let me do a quick flip check. I think your crater needs to be more voluminous. The music is by Banshee Beats, as always. His info is also in my stream layout. I want to check out more of his stuff. Banshee.net, I believe. Okay. Yeah, there, uh, Alex dropped the link in there. She 
kind of want to give her like, weird colors. I always think of like pink when I think of Koski Chupo stuff. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go to watercolors again. It's just faster. This is pressure controlled, by the way, so the harder I press, the darker the color gets here. I can erase with it too. I guess the uh, Duck Man usually has, the show itself, usually has pastel colors. how well digital tools can emulate real mediums nowadays. I mean, I still like using natural mediums, but I also like being able to erase things. I kind of want to give her trunks colored hair. There's also like a, a salt tool. Salt as in salt and pepper, not a salt in Photoshop that um, emulates what happens when you pour or sprinkle salt on um, a wet watercolor painting. It creates like nice, nice little spots. Something to do with chemistry. Again, that's in Photoshop, so I can't show it off right now. And I'm just gonna blend it with a textured blender. There's also something called watery brush that adds more water to it washes it out a bit. Yeah, there's like so many different, very specific watercolor effects you can achieve digitally now. Just to up the realism. It's mostly all about making it look less refined, which I think is very interesting. There are tools to achieve imperfection. Okay, there we go. It would definitely look more Duckman style if she had like a, a buxom body. I don't want to go that far though. Oh, I forgot the inside of her mouth. A lot of neat truck treat, uh, treats, tricks you can do with watercolors. If you missed last week's stream, um, Laura was streaming and she was showing off her her Copic marker abilities. And Copic markers feel very watercolory in the way you use them. So I suggest checking that out if you missed it last week. Let's give her yellow whites. 
Yellow's also nice to use for just an extra touch of color. So I think I'll do a quick wash. It just adds a bit of dimension to the color here. Okay, there's my attempted Duckman style on a BA. quick break here and when I come back in a minute or two I'm gonna move on to requests requests that were made through Instagram okay I'm back yeah, Alex dropped the link in there for the Instagram if I stream again, I will take new requests. I have such a huge backlog of requests though, that I figured I'd give those people another chance to be picked. Let me pull up my list here. To sketch with. It needs to be pinker. There we go. Now I kind of want to see if I can put all these characters in one image. Because I'm I have less time today. So as usual, I'm going to start drawing and let's see if you can guess who it is. I actually have drawn this character before, it's just been a very, very long time. I wish someone requested Lyle Lanley, that'd be fun. Totally screwed McDuck. He always poses like this.
Yep, you got it. It's Trucy from Ace Attorney. This poor underutilized character. Yep, I really like I really I really love the East Attorney series. Paul Justice, not one of my favorites. In fact it's pretty polarizing the fandom. I do like Trucy though. Yeah, a pull of justice was like a pretty risky move on their part, what they did to Phoenix. I honestly wish they stuck to their guns and kept him like that. Instead, they just kind of reset everything. This is a rare occasion where I don't focus on the face first. I just wanted to get the pose down. Oh shoot, I took off her hat, didn't I? Need reference for that now. Okay. Yeah, Hobo Phoenix, as he's referred to in the fandom. I thought he was really cool. It was a very shocking turn for the character. But now it's just Phoenix again. I think I'm not gonna go super detailed with the art today. <laughs> Two hats. I could do that. I think um, one of my streams were- or was it my, one of my streams? Yeah, my last one. We were talking about how any video game character that's in their 30s looks like they're drawn to look like they're more like in their 40s all these like wrinkles in their faces and how like Sid Hywin from FF7 is supposed to be what like 32 years old and Oren from FF uh, Final Fantasy X is like 35 I think things like that I think Gumshoe is in his early 30s as well if I recall correctly early 30s or late 20s, I think. Alright, she has gloves. This hat is super wonky. I need a better angle to draw this from. Oh, the bird needs to be way bigger because it has to put her head. I know she usually pulls out her her magic. Does she call them her magic panties in English? Which just turns out to be bloomers. Yeah, that's 
a joke in the English version. In the Japanese version, she calls her magic pansu. And pansu just means underwear in general. And the joke is that they're, they're just like these giant bloomers and not what you think they are. But they're just straight up called panties in English, which is way more specific. Script it's supposed to clear out a bit more here. I've actually not played all of the games. I haven't played the latest one, uh, Spirit of Justice. But everything else I've played in both English and Japanese because I'm a huge fan. Okay. So, let me just save this for now. So I'm gonna try to add to this with other requests. Okay. I know what I want to add now. Yeah, the second Edgeworth game is really good. I really loved it. I can't quite decide if I like the first Edgeworth game more or the second one. I like the first one more for the game mechanics. The second one, I feel like they watered down the game mechanics, but it has a better story and cast. Just looking up some references. Oh, Super Soul Brothers is raiding. Hello. Their uh, past stream was on uh, replay right before mine started. I'm just drawing some requests. It should be pretty obvious what this is. Oh, you're hosting a current stream, okay. Sorry, I thought it was an older one because I think there was one time where you were replaying their stuff. I've actually got multiple requests for Moogles or Mog. I'm not sure how, uh, how I want to do this posing. Actually, Bob and I, we were talking about like various um, different kinds of Moogle designs there have been throughout the series. We play FF14 together. I was talking about how I'm not a big fan of how they look in uh, in 12. But they look more like rabbits. I really like how they look in 14. Actually, we are Bob and I are married in Final Fantasy XIV, and the, the ceremony was officiated by a Google. I'm actually not a fan of the next scruff, so I'm not gonna do that. This will kind of be my, my own version. Maybe I'll do multiple ones. Or 
Originally, they're supposed to be a matchup between a mole and a bat. That's where their Japanese name comes from. If you look at their older designs, you can kind of see what they were going for. Yeah, 12 and Tactics Adventure, their Moogle design is pretty similar. Very skinny and rabbit-like. I just don't like it. I think they should stay true to the uh, mole bat hybrid they're supposed to be. I guess they, I guess they just kind of abandoned that idea after a bit and thought they don't have to actually look like a mole bat. They're their own creature now. They're not tied down to being two existing animals mashed up together. Okay, so that's done. Just checking my list here to see who else I want to add. Okay, I decided. This is another character that's been requested by multiple people. Let me just slide these down a bit first. I'm just flipping it now to see where I want to add this character. I think I'll start down here. This one should be super obvious too once I start. First, I need reference. This is a Fangamer stream. Fangamer has been doing a stream every Thursday for the past few weeks now, in case you missed it. This is my third one that I've done for them. Yeah, see, I, I knew people would get it right away. I mean, that's a sign of a good character design, honestly. Or as soon as you as soon as you see the shape, it's like, oh, that's Sans. I'm looking at reference for the trombone here. I have dabbled in quite a few musical instruments, but I never tried trombone. Yeah, it is kind of like the pokey silhouette. He's got a pokey bod. I think dad bods are out, the pokey bods are in. So 
since I am also musically inclined, I like to be as accurate as I can when I draw people playing musical instruments. I know it bothers me when people draw instruments being played wrong. Though honestly, like, my, my philosophy is it doesn't always have to be accurate, it just has to be believable. Especially when you're just trying to have fun with a stream like this. I think his arm needs to be, like, shorter than this. Susie and non sensical instruments. Those are fun, yeah. Has anyone done like a like a YouTube video critiquing Susie and musical instruments? Just some like really frustrated, pedantic musician being like, how does this work? There's no way any sound could come out of this thing. Look how twisted it this is. And where are the buttons? There's probably something like that out there. Man, I really, like, made myself quite a problem by committing to this trombone. Yeah, a channel where, where someone craps those Susian instruments would be really cool. And then seeing how they sound. Or maybe they can make them work. Okay, this is good enough. I think whenever I do these streams, good enough is what I say the most. That's part of being an artist, is knowing when to move on. He needs to be leaning back more, I think. Five Thousand Fingers of Dr. T, the live-action Seuss film. I don't think I've ever seen that. Is that based on a on a book? Oh, it's just like generally Susian. I've drawn sand so many times now for Fan Gamer that I could definitely draw it from memory. I've never drawn it with a trombone before though. This is a first. I see these flip checks are very important. He's leaning back way too much now. It's a magic trombone. That's how it works. Also, a wizard did it. Too short to too short. Okay, I'm not super satisfied with it. But good enough. Moving on to the next character. Uh, speaking of Pokey and Earthbound, uh, Bob, who I mentioned earlier, my fiance, whose birthday it is today, he actually has a bit of a history with Fangamer, is he wrote an article that uh, heavily featured Fangamer back in 2014. 
And if you go to Wikipedia and go to the article about Earthbound fandom, this is actual Wikipedia, not like the Earthbound wiki. It's an article about Earthbound fandom, and Bob is cited a lot in it. Because he wrote a nice article about the posthumous uh, fandom of Earthbound. So I suggest, you, I suggest you check that out. It was on oneup.com, which is a site that's long gone, but there there is the, the archived version that you can read. Yeah, Alex uh, linked it in there. And uh, Fangamer made shirts for, and still makes shirts for Retronauts, his uh, classic gaming podcast. I actually wanted one of those shirts, the orange one with the, the old Retronauts logo. I always thought that was super slick looking. But by the time I got into Retronauts and wanted one, there were only like huge sizes left. I say we bring it back. Yeah, thanks for being on top of the, the links today, Alex. It's super helpful. I'm gonna add another skeleton character in here. This is a request from AG Market or Marquet on, on Instagram. Yeah, Retronauts with Jeremy Parrish. It's run by Bob and Jeremy. And I've, I've been on Retronauts a few times as well. I was on an episode about uh, Princess Tomato, about the Disney Afternoon Collection, which I did the cover art for. And lately, Bob has been um, doing a series about classic LucasArts adventure games. And I've been on the ones about Monkey Island so far. And this topic is very relevant to who I'm drawing next. Actually, Cinco de Mayo two days ago. So ultra relevant. Yeah, Grim Fandango, I, I really like the style of it. However, it's weird because I am such a huge LucasArts games fan. But I could never get into this one. I've tried playing it all the way through many times. And even when they came out with the like the newest remastered version, I was like, oh maybe now I can uh, appreciate it more. But I tried it and I, I still couldn't get into it. So I think it's like the controls, like they, they made the controls a lot better in the latest uh, re-release, which helped for sure. But just something about it never really clicked with me. Oh yeah, um, I would suggest watching a stream or YouTube video with someone playing it because the story and the characters are really awesome for sure. When it comes to the gameplay though, well, I'm sure Bob is going to cover this in his LucasArts series uh, pretty pretty soon. I shouldn't say that, I should just say eventually. Because he's slowly making his way through all of them. So far he's covered Monkey Island 1 and 2 with me. And Loom. Full Throttle. Zack McCracken. I think that's it so far? There's so many cosplays of Manny, but it's so easy. You just like, roll up some white poster board paper. 
and stick it on your head and draw the face on it. I'm trying to find out what his body looks like here. How many skeletons are going to be in this drawing? I don't know. How many could I fit in here? The amount of time that I have. Yeah, you never really- you never see what Manny looked like when he was alive. Uh, what should he be doing with his hands? Maybe just smoking. If I'm allowed to draw that, this is a, a PG stream now. space. Do you think Manny and Sans would get along? What do you think? It's true, Manny would be a, a great straight man character for Sans. Actually, <laughs> Manny dressed like Papyrus or Papyrus. I forget how you pronounce it, but dressed like him would be really cool. Maybe it's already been done. Oh yeah, Sam and Max, that's another one that, that Bob covered. And his legs are really weird, I don't understand how they work. Papyrus? Okay. Yeah, I think Papyrus is how I, I pronounce it for a really long time until Undertale came out. Yeah, I need to nudge him down once I'm drawing. Uh, done drawing his feet here. Okay. Manny and Sans are buddies now. Quick flip check. Oops, wrong flip. Okay, move on to the next character. I don't think I have any more skeletal characters here. Actually, this guy kind of looks skeletal. You were afraid of your parents catching you playing Sam and Max. I don't know. I feel like the humor in that is is pretty tame. It's very goofy. I feel like most of it is is clean fun, except for jokes about like guns and whatever. I know there's some like guns and booze stuff in there. I don't know who this character is, but they're cool looking, so I'm gonna draw them. Also, they're easy. <laughs>
Does anyone know who this is? Yeah, it's it's uh Tiso from Hollow Knight. Someone really wanted me to draw this character. Never got very far in that game because I'm bad at platforming. I actually get a lot of requests for Hollow Knight characters for these streams. It seems like every time I look at the list of requests and I'm like, who is this character that I'm getting a lot of requests for? I look it up and it's always like a Hollow Knight character. I also got a lot of requests for Mantis, another character I don't know. I thought this guy looked pretty cool. Yeah, he's cute. He kind of fits in here. I don't even know what's going on in this picture anymore. Trucy's putting on a show for these weirdos. Okay. On to the next character. Okay, here is a request from Smilaz45. Looking at reference. Another instrument is involved here. This character should also be pretty obvious once they get started here. Not quite skeletal, but could be a skeleton. It's got like similar vibes going on, if that makes any sense. Yeah. KK's like head and his features almost look like he could be a skull, you know? That's true, Tiso has an exoskeleton. Kind of counts. I'm just gonna draw a very simple guitar. I don't want to get into too much detail here. Okay, I'm gonna have to move him a bit because... Tiso's arm is getting in the way. I think this is good. If he's sitting down, that should be about the right level. Yeah, that's weird how KK doesn't wear any clothes. Is he the only character who doesn't wear any clothing? I still have not had him on my island yet, by the way. I only play for like an hour every day in the morning while I do stretches. I like using my morning Animal Crossing time to do like some basic leg stretches and also my new favorite thing to do is like just jogging in place while I'm playing Animal Crossing. Jogging in place and also doing like jumping jacks. Not the arm motion, just the legs. And then once I'm done Animal Crossing, I move on to Ring Fit. That's been my morning routine now. And I did that before the stream too. Yeah, Blathers only wears a bow tie, but he's wearing something. Actually, what was Sister Celeste? Did she wear a bow in her hair? Or feathers? I, I was lucky with how I got ring fit. One of my fangamer coworkers just sent me hers. So I could borrow it. And if I want to keep it, I can just pay her. I'm not sure if I want to keep it yet. 
Like, I'm used to doing more intense exercises because I do Muay Thai. So right now, I'm like, this is a good way for people to get into fitness, but if you're already super into fitness, it's a little too uh, light of an exercise, but it is getting better. Like, today I think I started breaking a sweat for the first time. So I want to keep going with it. Once we're out of lockdown though, and I'm able to go to the gym again, I don't know if I'll keep playing it. <laughs> we're still talking about the nudity of Animal Crossing characters. Yeah, I think the the weird argyle pattern that Blathers and Celeste have is meant to be part of their feathers. I think. I wonder if that's the right size for KK. Actually, Tiso wouldn't be that big, would he? Tiso would have to be like... Let me go to this beacon layer. He'd have to be more like... This small? I kind of like that, actually. Uh, should I keep him like this? It's kind of cute. It's like a, an Easter egg, almost. <laughs> I'm gonna keep him like this. It'll give me more room for other characters, too. So let me... Maybe make it, he can be, like, between her... Her feet here. No, then he looks kind of like a pervert. I'm gonna move him over here. KK is looking at him now. Let me just fill in, fill this in a bit. <laughs> I think this works. See, now I have all this room for another character. On the left. <laughs> yeah, KK is making sure Tiso doesn't pull anything here. Alright, let me check out my list of characters. I'm drawing a bunch of creatures this time. So I, I kind of want to keep that going. I got a request for Shrek, but I'm not drawing him. I'm sorry. Man, so many people requested Sans. Which I think is strange, because I've already drawn Sans many times. Or maybe they don't know that. <laughs> Tony, that's actually on my, my list. My list of favorite requests. Yeah, you know what? I think I'll draw that. Why not? He kind of fits in. He also has... Like a... Almost like a sans shape to him. So I can start with that. Like if I just start drawing a basic sans shape... Oh, he'd have to be taller than Trucy, wouldn't he? I'll just make him like a weirdly uh, small creature-like version of George Costanza. I have drawn him before in my famous Cyan Feld drawing, where I drew Jerry, George, Elaine, and Kramer in Toriyama style. That was a, a commission. I got a while back from the Seinfeld 2000 Twitter account. Let me look up this this morning mist look. Like I know what it looks like in my head, but I need reference. I guess I'll need all these bags and stuff too. 
Do you think that's part of the, the morning mist look? Is that important? Okay, I can just draw the outfit. But if I feel the if I feel that the bags add to the picture overall, I might stick them in there. Now I gotta think about how I wanna, wanna draw him. Like I do like the Toriyama version I drew of him. It would kind of fit in with the rest of the picture if I drew him more stylized like that. I'm looking at my own picture now. morning misty music to go with this. part of the look. I bet you could replicate this look in Animal Crossing. got this the hat from knowing uh like most tv wardrobe and where they got stuff from it might just be like this super unattainable expensive brand from new york draw his some of his bags to give him something to do with his hands here Did you find it? Did you find the hat?
one thing I, I love about what they did with with how they dressed up George Costanza on the show is apparently they they always bought him clothing that was one or two sizes too small for him. Just so he always looked dorky. I can't remember where I, I learned that fact from, but it always stuck with me. Oh, he wore the same pair of shoes in every episode. That's a nice touch too. To give a, a TV character the same thing that they wear all the time, if they're meant to be just like an average citizen. They, they made the, the Seinfeld Lego set instead of the Friends one. Yeah, I, I used to watch Friends when it, was, when it was first on, like for the first and second season, and then I just kind of fell out of it. Yeah, you're right, a lot of the fashions on this show would totally be considered, like, hipster. Uh, what does this other bag look like? I'm not going to get super crazy with the bag detail though, because it doesn't really matter. Is Friends still on Netflix? I know it was a big deal when it went on Netflix. I need to shrink his face a bit, hold on. Oh, they lost it a few months ago? Or is it moving to Peacock? Oh, HBO- it's gotta be on HBO Max? Why not Peacock? Oh, Warner owns the show, not NBC. These things can get so complicated. That's one of the things that we at Fangamer have to deal with. Sometimes we have to like figure out who owns what. a lot of time with George here. <laughs> okay. This is super... like right here. This part is bothering me, so I am gonna have to just... either nudge him more to the right or change the hat angle. I like where he is though, so I'm gonna change the hat angle.
These are things that need to be carefully considered when drawing anything. The tangent lines. Okay. I still don't know what's going on here. Maybe I'll turn this into a, a birthday picture for Bob too. He likes everything represented here. They're all celebrating Bob's birthday. Hmm, I kind of want to squeeze in one more character. Let me take a quick break while I think about this. Okay, I'm back. I actually found another good request, which is also something Bob likes. And I can fit it right here or so. Yeah, I think that that's good. I need more reference for this one. It's not the green M&M, &M, but it's pretty close. It's got the same energy. Yep, it's Ms. Pac-Man. I never noticed this before, but she has like a tuft of hair that her bow is attached to, at least in this drawing. I guess it depends on which version she is. Actually, I'm going to take that off because I think usually she doesn't have this. Why would she have that? that that's weird. It's a very saucy looking character. I guess she only had that weird tuft of hair once and then they got rid of it. With good reason, I think. So doesn't Miss Pac-Man have a, a mole on her cheek in her sprite? Because I don't see it in her like key art. It looks like she, she has it sometimes, but not most of the time. I'm gonna add it though, because I think she needs it. Are you talking about Pac-Man 2, the new adventures? I think I'm done with Pac- uh, Miss Pac-Man already. Quick flip check. Yeah, it's such a weird game. I've never played it, but it looks incredibly frustrating to play. I haven't decided if I want to ink this or not. I guess I should. Maybe I'll start that now, because I've got like an hour left in my stream. Let me just erase some of these underlines.
I never really finished her cape here. Let me do that real quick. Oh man, you actually played Pac-Man 2 as a kid. That must have sucked. Trying to figure out that thing. Oh, you rented it? At least you didn't buy it. Imagine being stuck with that. I think everyone, or most people around our age, has had the experience of being stuck with shoddy games and having nothing else to play. Saved. Now I can start inking this. Let me just merge with these layers. Oops, that's too many layers. Uh, what do I want to ink this with? I might just stick to this Millie pen because otherwise I'm going to want to refine this way too much and I don't have time for that. There is a lot for me to ink here. Inking is both one of my favorite and least favorite parts of doing a picture. I like that it's it's kind of mindless. Like I can, I can like usually listen to podcasts or have something on in the background while I'm do, uh, doing inks. But there are times where I hit a wall because, you know, when I'm doing the pencils, I'm like, well, this is roughly what it'll look like, and then the rest can be figured out later when I'm inking. So when I'm inking, I'm like, oh shoot, here's the part I didn't want to figure out while I was uh, doing the rough sketch here. I think I got her hair wrong. Yeah, it's supposed to go back in a ponytail, like behind her, her ear. Thought something looked wrong. Yeah, the inking dig digitally sometimes is like way more time consuming than inking on paper because you can erase the mistakes. Or you zoom, zoom in too much and you add too much detail and then when you zoom back you realize all that detail is lost. That's why I'm using this unrefined pen to keep things rough and simple. If the lines don't connect, that's totally fine. You've got to know your strengths and weaknesses when you're an artist. And I know for a fact that a lot of times when I when I clean my uh, my drawings, clean up my drawings, it doesn't look as good as my my rough sketch. So to make up for that, I like having or like a deliberately sketchy style. Unless I'm working on something that requires clean lines, which I do have to do for painting sometimes. personal art like this though, I prefer to keep things rough. Inking on paper is very satisfying. It's 
just something I don't really get to do nowadays. One of my favorite requests I've gotten for the stream that I haven't drawn is Skyrim. Like, just Skyrim. I know they probably mean, like, somebody from Skyrim. I just like the idea of someone telling me to draw all of Skyrim. <laughs> yeah, uh, can you draw the whole game? I do love the game. I actually wouldn't mind drawing from, from someone from Skyrim, but I don't know, it's just anything with armor, it just takes me a very long time. Like I don't try to make things super accurate with armor when I, when I have to draw someone from say like Final Fantasy XIV, which I talk about a lot. But then I gotta figure out how to stylize things and simplify things. Like, that takes a while, too. <laughs> the adoring camp from Oblivion. I remember that guy. Oh man, I played so much Oblivion. And then I played Skyrim, and now I, it's really hard for me to go back to Oblivion. I can't do it. I know not everyone liked Skyrim, but I liked it a lot. There, I think there are certain things that Oblivion does do better. Like the Assassin Guild is awesome. And the Thieves Guild. I, I like the Thieves Guild storyline in Skyrim. But the one in Oblivion was just so cool. But overall, Skyrim just makes so many improvements. And it looks great. Now, I wanted to get into Tomorrowwind, but that's also something very, very hard to get into if you didn't start out playing Morrowind and then, you know, go on to Oblivion and then go into Skyrim. It's rough. I kind of wish I had gone into Morrowind back in the days. I even tried playing it with all the mods that make it look better, but my computer couldn't handle it. It just crashed. Also, I think when I tried playing it, I was immediately killed by a bunch of scorpions, like giant scorpions. So I think I wandered into the wrong, the wrong neighborhood. Yeah, Daggerfall seems like a really cool game. But again though, I feel like it's gonna be hard to get into. Yeah, I should have ne never taken that stroll down Scorpion Alley. That was my mistake. I was immediately stunned, and then my pearl necklace shattered to the ground and spilled everywhere. And my son grew up to be a real weirdo. I love the cover art for Daggerfall, like that is really cool looking. We need to bring back painted cover art like that. Speaking of LucasArts games, those cover arts are really cool. The ones by Steve Purcell. 
they were a huge influence on me as an artist. I kind of drew from those uh, as inspiration when I did the cover art for Thimbleweed Park. And, and Ron Bert Gilbert actually said the cover that I did for it reminded him of Steve Purcell's stuff. That made me really happy. Because that is sort of what I was going for while still making my own thing. I think you can still get the those box editions of Thimbleweed Park and Fangamer too. Along with a bunch of merch that I designed. That was a, a super fun game to work for. And as a, a big Ron Gilbert fan, it was super exciting to get to do something for him. Yeah, Alex just dropped the link there. makes another game because the movie park was great like a little a little bit too many um, slams against Sierra though I know Sierra's game design was very cruel, but there's still a certain charm to them. If you've heard me on Retronauts talking about adventure games, you'll know I'm a big uh, defender of the Sierra games. I never played Quest for Glory, but I want to. In fact, I think I bought like every single Sierra game in like a really cheap bundle. This was a while back. Oh yeah, uh, Quest for Glory was streamed on this channel not too long ago. I mostly played King's Quest and Space Quest when I was younger. And also the the Lara Bow mystery series. Which I think Bob should play, because he likes mysteries. You really gotta use a, a walkthrough for it though. I think they want you to play that like multiple times to figure it out and it's just so so hard. Yeah, the, the Colonel's Bequest is, is really cool. I love how that game looks too. Actually, man, I can't remember what it's called, but there is someone making a game that looks a lot like uh, the Colonel's Bequest. Sierra introduced you to Japanese games? Oh, cool. Okay, I'm gonna have to get... Um, start drawing this faster here. I'm just trying to figure out the order of things right now. Okay, I can finish Trucy's legs now. I'm not drawing fast enough, I need to speed up if I want to finish this before four. Four Pacific time.
Yeah, I think for a long time, game companies tried to hide games and game consoles that came from Japan as being from Japan. satisfied with how the sands looks with the way he's holding the trombone but it'll have to do can't get too hung up on these things because most of the time it's something only you the artist cares about trust me I've made some pretty big mistakes in things that I've drawn and had published where people to this day still have not noticed those mistakes. Even when I tell like a friend like hey I made a huge mistake in this picture can you tell what it is? And they look at it for a really long time they still can't find it. Or they do and it takes them forever and they never really would have realized until unless until I told them to look for a mistake. Yeah, Schrodinger's mistake. Oh, it's too bad that interview didn't get saved. I'm glad I caught it when it was on. depends on the artist and how detailed they want to make it. I'll just make it weird and white and plushy. I'm thinking about how I want to color this. Maybe I'll stick to the watercolors. Or maybe I'll make it monochromatic to make things a hundred times easier. Or maybe I'll just keep it as line art. We'll see. We'll see how much time I have left. The whole reason humans have skin is because if we were skeletons, there'd be too many lines to draw. That's very true. Scientifically accurate. Although Manny here is pretty easy to draw, even though he's a skeleton. I wish I liked this game more. Oh wait, does he have a, a shirt collar? Very slightly visible. 
Yeah, Man uh, Gladys is a great character. He's kind of got that Bobcat Goldthwait energy to him. Yeah, it starts off pretty slow. The story gets pretty interesting though, if you hang in there. Yeah, I feel the same way. Like, I, I really don't have a whole lot of time to devote to games. Like, new games, mostly. So, if it doesn't cap uh, catch me in like the first hour and like pass. Oh, how many fingers does he have? Just. Okay, he has like Simpsons number of fingers. He's got a weird swirl here. Alright, he's got a swirl here too. Yeah, so many people are able to go through their game's backlog right now because of lockdown. Not me though, just because work has not slowed down at all for Fangamer. It almost feels like we're working harder than ever now, actually. I am very excited about a lot of things we're working on right now though, and are soon to be released. Is anything released today? I'm not sure if I'm drawing his pants accurately. Quick redraw. I need better preference of this model. Oh wow, if you play Second Life, you can get a Manny Calabera avatar for yourself. Okay, I guess his torso just needs to be a lot longer. Again, I never try to be like super on model when I draw fan art, but fan art, but there are certain rules I need to adhere to, I think. And in this case, he needs that long torso and really short legs. It's kind of like an Okami character. He's got tiny feet too. That's looking better already. Quick check. I think to keep things simple, I am just gonna fill in his legs and feet and all in black. Because they're basically like blocky shapes.
bit of cup definition. And then I'm just gonna fill it all in black. There, it's good enough. Normally I would fill in with hand, by hand, because I like that look. You know, where I'm just like doing that instead of the paint bucket fill, but just to save time. I cheated. I don't have KK on my island yet because I was kind of, um, I'm kind of falling behind on things. For the longest time, I didn't have a campsite and I didn't realize that you have to talk to Tom Nook on a regular basis and ask him, what do I do before he tells you important things like, well, now you can build a campsite. So I didn't do that for a long time. I was like, how come I can't get any more villagers? And then my coworkers at Fangamer helped help me out. And now I'm just finally starting to get more villagers. Yeah, definitely subscribe to the Fangamer newsletter. They're not spammy at all, I promise. When you get a uh, newsletter from them, it's like actual news about new releases. It helps me too. I'm so busy like keeping my head down and working on my own stuff that sometimes I don't realize when like, things of mine are getting released. So sometimes I'll open my mail, get, get the newsletter and be like, oh hey, there's something I made that's been released today. Check on that as soon as I'm done with the stream here. This might be my first time drawing KK. It's really fun. The the lack of clothing helps. His eyes look like mushroom slices. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, I really want to do the, the the KK Slider album parody thing so badly. I just don't have the time for it. Because I would definitely want to do every single Beck album. And that would take a while. do it though. I guess it depends on how nicely I want to render them. Are people still doing it by the way? I feel like by the time I, I finally get around to doing it, it'd just be like an old fad. slider art turned out really cute. I'm happy with it. Okay, now for this guy. I'm glad I kept him small now. He made room for George. I guess I can still do it whenever I want. It doesn't have to be like a current meme or anything. Oh, 
will I ever have time for it? I'd have to make time for it. If I put down one of his bags, it would cover up one of his legs and be way easier to draw, so maybe I'll do that. Little efficiency cheats. Why they pay me, people? It actually helps give Tiso a bit of a background as well. I should put a rock in front of the other foot. I'm not gonna rob it up. Yeah, George needs more straps. Straps and little pouches everywhere. But Rob Liefeld George would be pretty funny. picture. I'm drawing on him are, are super accurate. I just don't have time to look up proper reference. It's close enough. I might just go for a monochromatic thing. Although then you can't get the morning mist colors on George here. Yeah, the bags kind of add to Liefeld's status. They'd have to be lots of little, little bags though. Full life out. Liefeld Seinfeld would make sense, actually. 
make that a parody. Yeah, I feel like George should be wearing a, a fanny pack in this scene. Bags definitely helps signify that it is Morning Miss George. Has anyone made like a which George Costanza are you quiz? I feel like that would exist. And I might just keep it this to like one or two colors. Add like a bit more shading in, in some key spots. How big is Pac-Man and Ms. Pac Ms. Pac-Man supposed to be anyway? Maybe she should be the size of Tiso. Have they ever been next to a human? Oh yeah, Pac-Man too. There's also those um, animated, the CG animated Pac-Man cartoons on Netflix. I don't know if a human's ever in those though. I think there is um, a Christmas one, a Christmas movie, where they meet Santa Claus. I can't remember if it's like a human Santa Claus or like a, a pack Claus. Oh yeah, Smash Brothers. He's pretty huge in that, right? And I guess the scales in Smash Brothers are always kind of off. It'd have to be. Like, if they put Hollow Knight in Smash, he'd have to be pretty big. Bigger than he's meant to be. Oh, it's a human Santa? Kirby is supposed to be 8 inches tall? Really? I guess he, um... He, like, interacted with a lot of cakes. And the cakes are pretty huge. Yeah, Samus is supposed to be super tall. Sure, the, the suit adds a little bit to her height. Okay, 
Okay, I think... Actually... I'm gonna shade it a little bit more. I guess I'll just add the, the pattern on his hat with the inks. Just makes it easier. I can't get it exactly right. If I wanted to, I would have to use color. But I can try. I just need to alternate between thick lines and thin lines. So there's the thick lines. There's a thin. Yeah, that works. Oh, and I wanted to add some, like, confetti here. So let me do that on a separate layer, in case I want to move those around. I like doing stuff like this, like adding little particles when I can. It just helps to add some, I don't know what you call it, um, just makes the picture a little bit more dynamic. And it helps fill space too. coming out of here. Man, George is so short compared to Trucy. She's like 15 years old, I think. Manny's really short too. Manny's the shortest out of the three. I feel like I made Sans too, too small actually. Oh, whatever. It's fine. Okay, um, I've got like 20 minutes left, so let me choose a color. Maybe I'll just make it gray. I'm not sure what tool I want to use yet. I might just stick with the watercolor. makes it look like an ink drawing. Like I used a India ink wash on everything. Oh, I forgot to add a bit of shading to her gem here. Once I'm done adding the ink wash, I think I'll add a bit of white on top of things. Just a spruce. Uh, spruce things up a little bit here. Using the watercolor brush helps because if I just want to make things darker, I just gotta layer it. It's so easy. This is like a very dark navy. So I think a lot of these characters are like mostly white. The like KK, Sans, and Manny. So they'll be easy to shade. Oh, and, and the uh, Moogles as well, of course. This is looking pretty slick already.
this group picture was fun to do. I should do this from now on instead of just drawing like each individual picture, uh, character I mean. This Ms. Pac-Man needs the old timey shiny eyelids. Sure, this would be the best thing Bob's ever received for his birthday. This ragtag group. Okay. Actually, I think uh, Sans is shorts needs to be filled in with black. Okay, Master Matthews, the race birthday. Yep. Was that your old username? Game Master Anthony, that guy who wrote in a forum saying that all his favorite fictional characters came to celebrate his birthday. Right. <laughs> oh, that guy. I hope he had a good day. How old was he again? So does it involve like you like all the games and and shows these characters are from? Like I I realized that as I was drawing these. I think it's because we have like similar tastes. And just like me, you also couldn't really get into Grim Fandango, but appreciates it for what it is. Funny because he's lonely. Yeah, I hope he's. I hope that guy's doing okay right now. doesn't have to be super accurate when you're shading things either. When you're doing something like this, it's not really about like getting the right like actual like scientifically accurate lighting going on. It's more like you're helping push and pull elements to make things stand out. Uh, some things stand out and some things stand out not as much depending on what you want. Like example, I think, uh, let me just erase this part here. If I shade all of Trucy's left leg, like, it doesn't make a ton of sense, but it helps pull Ms. Pac-Man out more, because she was getting kind of lost there. Just add a bit of rim lighting. And right here too, like 
if I just add a bit of shading on Trucy's legs. This Pac-Man just kind of pops out better. See, like, what I did right here is I added more shading to the back of this Pac-Man's leg. So now her other legs looks like looks like it's definitely in front of the other. It's all about just pushing and pulling elements. shading here in the back so that Tiso stands out a bit more. Okay, so here's another thing. Like, if I wanted to make the lighting accurate, KK's face would have to be shadowed over like this. But that makes him look kind of creepy. He's looming over Tiso here. So I'm not gonna do that. Because that's not the vibe I want for him. You gotta you gotta cheat these things a little. song kind of sounds like a K.K. Cider song. He's singing, you guys. music that Fancy Beats made for my stream and also he made like a different variation for, for Laura's stream. So I don't think these tracks are named. This is one of my favorite ones though. It's kind of like spy music. It almost reminds me of the, the spy music in Final Fantasy VIII. They're dressed like uh, soldiers and sneaking around. I can't remember what it's called though. We need more detail on on George's pants. Let me do that real quick. The Delling City music. Um. That's not the one I'm thinking of. There's another one where they're in the bomb base. Yeah, the one called the Spy. Yes, that's what I'm thinking of from um, the Fate. I just 
just wanted to give more texture to his pants because he's supposed to be wearing jeans. That's good enough. And then I can just... Actually, his pants are supposed to be pretty dark, so... Let me darken this up a bit. from the missile base. I like how it was like, oh, I, I like the spy music. It reminds me of the spy music in FF8. But I don't remember what it's called. It turns out it's just called the spy. Final Fantasy VIII soundtrack is one of my all-time game soundtracks. Uh, favorite game soundtracks. with his Vegeta expression. Yeah, I, I, don't ask me why George looks so sinister here. It's just the way it turned out. with Pac-Man character mashup. I could picture that. Are we talking like Pac-Man 2 Pac-Man? Where he looks really smug? <laughs> Maybe that can be your next request. just use the blender just to smooth out some elements. But overall I really like how this turned out. It turned out better than I expected for such a weird group.
pretty much how I like to color with markers too. Just take like one color. Yeah, I'm just assuming I get to do another stream at some point. I like doing these. It gives me a chance to work on something other than work. Work is fine, but I need to have fun once in a while too. And I don't allow myself to have fun unless I am doing a stream for work. that great at lettering to be honest. Put on a grid here. No. Yeah, an arc would make sense, but that would take too long to perfect, so I'm just gonna try on a straight line. It's just easier that way. Cursive would have worked too, but I'm not great at cursive, so... I think this is fine. It's a real fun party, and they all came out to celebrate Bob's birthday. So Bob got two birthday pictures today. Yay, there he is in the chat, Retronauts. You're welcome. And I'm gonna put up all the pictures I drew on my Twitter. And my Twitter name is on my stream layout too, at the bottom there. That's Space Coyote. And Fangamer might retweet it too. for dropping the link in there, Alex. Well, that was fun. I want to do more group pictures like that. And keep it monochromatic helps a lot. It saves a lot of time. And I think the, the end result looks pretty snazzy too. So thanks again for joining me. Hope I get to do this again. And please make sure to check out all my stuff on Fangamer and my social media. And if we drop a Banshee beat a line too, I think his account is, his Twitter account is Banshee Tweets or Banshee Tweet. And tell him you like his music. Bye bye.